It's more than just coincidence You look around and see The earth, the moon, the sun and the sky A beautiful creation of Allah So how could you deny? How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to our show The Philosophy of the Islamic Law And as usual we are glad to have with us Professor Muhammad Naim yeah. Sa'i The Professor of the Islamic Law In America in several universities yeah, In the School of Sharia Thank you for being with us Welcome Shana. In the last episode we were talking about uh, certain issues and examples on how to apply the graduality of making da'wah or calling people to Islam and when to tell them certain issues and when to do not tell them and you differentiate between uh, the graduality of uh, how to call people to Islam and that there is no graduality at all in how to apply the Islamic law yes now I, we have uh, certain uh, other issues like for example um, a lady who wants to be a Muslim and uh, should we tell her for example that she has to wear hijab uh, wearing the veil immediately or we wait till she learn about it by herself uh, which should we tell her this before she become Muslim or after she become a Muslim like uh, how when and how this uh, kind of uh, the wisdom of calling people to Islam, this is what I'm sure that uh, many people want to know more about it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wallahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla. Inna ka taja'u al-hazna idha shi'ta sahla ilahana maulana rabbil alameen. Allimna ma yanfa'una. Wa anfa'na bima alamtana. Wa zidna miladuka ilma. وجعل كلامنا هذا كله خالصا لوجهك الكريم آمين. Yes, we have to uh, keep insisting on this differentiation. Make it very clear. You are free to choose the best way to approach someone for this Islam. And this is the part of the meaning of the verse of the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever from considerable method or tools or means in Islam are available to you to make it possible for that person to be approached wisely and nicely, beautifully to this deen, do it. Mm -hmm. Now when you are in the stage of teaching him some of Islamic rules, he is in need to apply it right now you don't have any room but to tell him what does he need to apply right now, female or male. Mm -hmm. She become Muslim, a lady, a girl, and she is now willing to apply Islam. After you approach her about Islam, after you have chosen many way, many considerable way in Islam to approach her, Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you. Uh, of finding her at the end saying Ashadu Allah ilaha Allah Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah she did say that mm. now she is willing now to hear from you what she's supposed to do what is her duty toward her Islam now your room has become very uh, tiny very small you have no choice but to tell her what does she need right now so if she, if she is not covering she has to cover she said sister you have to cover your body according to the Islamic criteria of the Muslim woman hijab. If, she have, if you have a boyfriend, there's no boyfriend in Islam. If you were uh, in the habit of drinking or gambling, you have to stop all of this. If she asks you about having a boyfriend, uh, you don't have to tell her that, uh, sister, uh, I don't know if you have a boyfriend or not. Do you have a boyfriend? You don't have to ask her this question. Mm. But if you are aware of this, of, of she asks you about this, this is one of the way of the wisdom of uh, delivering the message to her. 
She did not ask about boyfriend, and you don't know if she has boyfriend or not. You don't know if she is gambling or not. You don't know if she is drinking right now or not, in a habit of drinking or not. So what you know about her, it's your duty now to tell her that this is what you need, sister. You need to pray five times a day. You have to cover your body, inshallah ta'ala, according to the Islamic criteria for Muslim uh, women uh, hijab. And if you are in, in uh, during a month of Ramadan, an example, you need to fast Ramadan, according to the Islamic rules, inshallah ta'ala. That's it. So you apply whatever is necessary for her to apply it right now. You don't ask her about something you don't know. All right? You don't give her some uh, a new Islamic rules. She is not in need to mm. it right now. Now, if someone, if you found someone telling some ladies or girls, like, uh, you don't have to put the hijab right now. Take your time. Till you believe in hijab. Well, mm. as a matter of fact, we don't have the examples in the field of da'wah for new Muslims. We have it in the field of uh, Muslims, old Muslims in their homes. They have this belief. Mm. I heard many people saying the same statement. I don't, I don't force co- this hijab yeah, on my I don't daughter. force I my, to, my family yeah. to wear the hijab. I don't mm. force my wife, my, my daughter. I am very... Uh, liberal man, very free man, very educated man, uh, very open-minded. Open-minded man, yes, mm-hmm. very civilized person. I don't force anyone to do anything unless he, he wants it from his heart. This is uh, totally a big, big mistake in our uh, Muslims' uh, social life in, in, in the stage of, of uh, Islamic education, Islamic knowledge. Allah SWT said, يَا يُلَّذِينَ أَمْنُقُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا Allah has commanded us to save ourselves and save our family by applying his rules, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are responsible as a husband to apply your rules within your family. Now, this lady become Muslim because you are responsible enough for uh, transferring this deen to her. As we said, the rules she is in need, so you tell her, sister, now you have to cover your body. But if you tell her you don't have to cover your body right now, you are taking every minute, every second sin she is committing because of this fatwa, uh, God forbidden. Subhanallah. Yes. And uh, just to tell you the other uh, fact about this issue, how much is very sensitive and very important to make that uh, clarification about it. I heard in a program, in, uh, in a TV satellite channel, a program uh, prepared by some youth, Muslim youth, to be directed to the Muslim youth. Mm-hmm. And they received this question. How much this issue is not un- understood very well, even within Muslims, mm-hmm. within, within all Muslims, living in the Muslim countries, the gradualty in the field of application of the Islam, mm. and not to differentiate between this and gradualty in the field of da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He received that question. A, a, a young man, uh, he wants to pray, but he has a girlfriend, a Muslim. Mm. He wants to pray. He is so serious of being among those who they are praying every time, five times a day. But he has a problem. He has a girlfriend. And he said it's very hard for him to leave that girlfriend, mm. to cut his relationship with her. So what the answer? He was, that question was directed to these people in the program. And one of them uh, voluntarily donated his uh, false answer hmm. by saying, well, they were discussing this issue before they answered him. They said, if we tell, if we tell that young man uh, you should pray and cut relationship, he will not pray. So the hmm. best way is to uh, uh, approach him by saying, well, uh, our friend start to pray, inshallah ta'ala, and your prayer will help you to cut relationship with this girl. Hmm. But we don't tell her, tell him, cut your ship with that girl. So you could uh, stay a little bit with this girl till your prayer will help you to give you that kind of, of uh, uh, power, hmm. that strength to cut your ship by, by yourself. This is the, the, that was the, their answer to these people till my daughter, you know, my daughter sent an email to these people right away telling them that this is a false answer. You cannot answer that young man this way. 
they replied to her, no, we, we have some fatwa from some, some uh, shiuch saying mm. it, it's okay for him to, to keep mm. the girlfriend while he's praying. It was an amazing word. Subhanallah. Now let me tell you this, the same question, but in the opposite way. Mm. Now, uh, the person wants to be Muslim, but at the same time, he's afraid to be a Muslim because of this, his sins. Uh, for example, a person has uh, a girlfriend, and he doesn't want to be a Muslim because he knows that once he becomes a Muslim, he has to cut off his relationship or to cut off some of his sins, to stop doing some of his sins. And he feels that he's not worthy enough to become a Muslim. Till he finish, he wants to clean up his sins first, and then he uh, say the shahada. At that m time, the people who call him to Islam tell him, no brother, don't wait for that. It's better for you to be a Muslim sinner than not being a Muslim at all. Is that right? Well, let us put it this way. No one has an authority to give anyone uh, the carte blanche, as they said, that you are free to keep yourself on that sin while you are Muslim. If that person gets a sense from these people that it's okay for him to become Muslim and keep his girlfriend, this is a, a total uh, a mistake, it's a total crime against him from a standing point of view. But if they say to him, brother, or before he become brother, Allah will help you. We are not going to tell you that it's okay in Islam to keep your girlfriend. It's haram. It's forbidden. It's prohibited. It's a big, major sin. But we can tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you are honest and sincere of be, be, become a Muslim, Allah will help you to give you enough strength and power to cut that relationship. So brother, don't hesitate. Become Muslim. Allah will help you to give you more strength and power to cut the relationship with that girl. This is okay, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah ta'ala. This is the, the way to be approached that, that person. So to do not say it's, it's, uh, it's better to be a Muslim sinner than, rather than um, not Muslim at all, but you have to explain to him what we mean by this, that Muslim sinner means that you are trying to stop this uh, kind of uh, sins and mistakes. Right. This is, I think this is what they really mean by a Muslim sinner. Yeah, because sometimes the people, that they, they, uh, uh, they get it in the wrong way. So you have to be very careful, because if someone did understand what you are saying uh, mistakenly, you'll be uh, account uh, hold accountable, hold accountable you know, for, yes. for what he's going to commit later on. Yes. So yes. be careful when you are uh, saying something to some uh, new Muslim or someone who would like to become, become Muslim, Muslim inshallah. Yes. Uh, we will go for a quick break. Uh, please uh, stay with us. We have more to say. How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar. covering the manners in Islam that a Muslim is supposed to have in Islam. There is a strong link between having good manners and piety. And then he said, I guarantee a dwelling in the highest rank of Jannah for the one who perfects his manner. That indeed, truthfulness leads to piety, to righteousness. And righteousness and piety leads to Jannah. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, used to always uh, maintain family ties. Gentleness in Islam means to treat people with kindness and with tenderness. How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar. Welcome back. Uh, Professor Muhammad, before we went to the break, um, you mentioned, and uh, allow me please to repeat what you said to make sure that I understood it correctly. You mentioned that when we tell people um, to, to become Muslim, that it's not okay for us to tell them that go ahead, become a Muslim, and it's, so, it's better to be a Muslim sinner than 
uh, not Muslim at all, but it's, it's, we have to make sure that we, they have the right impression that they have to do everything possible to get rid of this sin being after being a Muslim. Which that will lead me to another uh, uh, part of the subject, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded every Muslim that we have to command people to do uh, the right thing and the correct thing and the righteous thing and forbid people uh, from the unlawful things. If somebody sees um, an unlawful uh, matter, uh, situation, but he feels that he's too weak to express his concerns or to change it, but he f might feel that maybe later on he can apply it, maybe later on he can say it, Maybe somebody else will, will uh, mention uh, this. Is the, in this case, is he uh, applying the graduality of the Islamic law or the graduality of uh, calling people to Islam or the da'wah? No, no, none of them. It is a different issue. But does have a big role with the first and the second issue because some of them are mixing between okay. the first and the second and then the third one. So as we said... Uh, graduality in the field of application of the Islam, uh, it is totally unacceptable. Yes. Graduality in the field of da'wah, it is a big room there. And use and uh, maybe utilize and employ the, the, the meaning of the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wal al hasan choose the subject, choose the considerable method in Islam to approach this person uh, on calling uh, him to be a Muslim. Now, that third issue now is the issue of commanding good things and uh, prohibiting or commanding, uh, preventing evil things. It does vary from person to another one. Not everyone does have the same ability of changing that uh, wrongdoing or unlawful things. That way the Prophet ﷺ, because this is coming from the Islamic law itself. Allah knows how to that we are not uh, one person uh, capability or ability. Uh, some people are able to, to change the wrongdoing or the unlawful things by just a uh, uh, move of, of their lips, mm. little move of their lips, or maybe uh, by just a uh, hint of, of their, uh, their eyes, uh, by maybe one word. Or sign an order. That, that's it. Mm. He can change that by signing, by one signature, by very little, because he has that kind of authority. Mm. So what he meant by Al-Islam biyadihi, Yadihi. He did not mean Hassan, his physical hand. Mm. Sometimes it is his physical hand sometimes mm. when you remove like a, a wine f from a table. Mm. But it, it is not that necessarily. It is uh, in, in, the, in the field of authority. So if someone is able by his authority to change the unlawful things, this is his duty. Someone is not able. He has no authority. He has no authority, no, no physical uh, ability to change that unlawful things or wrongdoing, but he is able to talk. He's able to clarify. He's able to advise. So he has to say, people, what you are doing is totally unlawful. Hmm. Oh Allah, be witness, I don't accept it. You don't accept it, I don't accept it. I try my best with these people. I told them, this is unlawful. Now, in some cases, you are not able even to do it by your tongue. You are so weak, or there's a fear that you might be hurt, or some damage or damage might be caused to your wealth, your honor, or something like this. So what, what you should do, at least, the minimum, try to change it by your heart. Express your refusal, your rejection to these unlawful things by saying in your heart to Allah, Oh Allah, you know, that if I'm able to change it by my authority, by my tongue, I would do it. I cannot, you know me, but I don't accept it, as you don't accept it. So this is a change in your heart. So this is regarding your ability of changing the unlawful things. You did not tell anybody, it's okay to you to do that unlawful things, right? Mm. Uh, either in the first stage or the second stage, or maybe that the third one. You did not tell anyone, it's okay with me to go ahead and, and drink wine or to gamble. You're not able to change, but you never said to anyone, it's okay from a standpoint of view to go and gamble or maybe drink.
So you did not give authority to anyone to commit a unlawful uh, things or maybe your own doing. You did not uh, tell anyone it's okay for you to uh, stop doing that evil things gradually. You did not do that mm. by first stage or the second stage. It is just the issue of how much you are able to change these unlawful things or maybe wrongdoing. And the Prophet, when he said that, he wanted so. to let everyone share and participate. So we know, because the Prophet has seen this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah yeah. knows that we are different people, different capability and abilities and different situation and conditions. But the meaning here in Islam, that everyone to be sharing, participating in this great mission, changing the wrong doing, changing the falsehood. Someone by his authority, someone by his tongue, someone by his heart. But all of them, they are sharing and joining the, the same great mission. So this is, uh, has nothing to do with applying gradually some Islamic rules. It is not uh, regarding the application of the uh, gradually the da'wah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is regarding the ability of changing the evil things. But when you see some people are mixing between the second issue, which is a graduality in field of da'wah, mm. and the issue of changing evil things, they are committing a big, big mistake. Because they are taking from net commanding or preventing evil things the sense that it's okay for us to go to the other field and tell people it's okay for you to stop doing that gradually. Which no, none of Muslim scholars, they have mm. uh, okay this or agreed on this. All of them said it is forbidden, it's prohibited, it's unlawful. Like for example, uh, if, you, if you wish to give us some example, but I have a certain example. All right. If somebody become a Muslim, and he just learned many things. And the people who are teaching him uh, Islam, they feel that they give him too much, too much information. They feel that they overload him with information and rules and, you know. But they notice that, oh, he has a haram job, unlawful job. In this case, would they wait till uh, he digest all the rules that they give it to him, or they, because of the nahi an, uh, an al munkar to forbid him from the un, uh, unlawful things, they have to apply it, and they should not be afraid that he might they might lose him totally from the religion. Subhanallah. Once again, that we said that how much that third issue can play a big role with the the second mm. issue, which is the issue of uh, uh, graduality in the field of dawa, but mixing between third one and, and, and second one might. Uh, 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 cause a big damage. So, just like you said, an example, a Muslim lady become Muslim. Uh, she put the hijab. Uh, she left her boyfriend. And she has a home. She's paying interest. Mm. And you are aware of that. Mm. Now, if you are not able in one case, when a certain condition to apply or to teach her the Islamic rule, in its case, in, 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 in her case, because you are afraid that she might leave the whole Islam mm. because of that, that will return to be uh, fit in the third issue, the issue of commanding good things and preventing evil things. Mm. Because... Muslim scholars, they have put three conditions of changing wrongdoing or unlawful things. First of all, you have to be aware of what you are going to comment. You have a full knowledge about this. You are mm. not an ignorant person. You know that this is what you are going to do or, or preventing is a totally unlawful. It's yeah. totally unacceptable in Islam. Second, it has to be within the categories of unanimous agreement among Muslim scholars. Mm. They don't have differences among themselves about this issue. Third, most likely, when you prevent that lawful and lawful things or evil things, that most likely will not lead to something larger or bigger or, or worse than these unlawful things. Mm. So if you are most likely believe that 
preventing these evil things right now might lead to the worst of that things, you stop it. I don't you, mention it. You don't mention it. Mm. You stop. So you are not changing. You are not telling it's okay with you. Keep what you are doing gradually and just stop doing it gradually. But you are afraid if you just approach her with this, might lead to the worst of what she is doing right now. Like someone, someone is, is very angry, uh, very uh, annoyed, and he is yelling, screaming. And if you tell him, Salli ala Rasulullah alayhi wa perform salah ala Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam, say be, uh, Muhammad peace upon him, or say la ilaha illallah. Mm. Someone is so angry, you would like to stop him. And he's yelling. And you found that it's the best way for that person to uh, make him come down, just to wait a little bit. If you say to him, say la ilaha illallah, he must say it, I don't believe in la ilaha illallah. Mm. You might take him out of the whole Islam. Mm. So you are stopping yourself from uh, uh, advising someone or changing something bad because that might lead to something worse than what he is doing right now. But you are not changing. You are not giving anyone authority or okay that stop doing it gradually. So you are at the, in the, in the third issue, the issue of changing the evil things. But you are taking the third condition as a very considerable condition that you are afraid that that might lead to the worst of what you are seeing right now. So you stop yourself till you are sure that this condition will be turned to be a suitable one to apply your, inshallah ta'ala, advising or recommendation. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Um, unfortunately, that's all what we have for today. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Muhammad, for being yeah, with for us sure. and sharing with us uh, uh, your knowledge. Uh, inshallah, we will meet uh, next uh, episode. Uh, please uh, join us and we have more to say. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's more than just coincidence. You look around and see the earth, the moon, the sun, and the sky. A beautiful creation of Allah. So how could you deny? How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar. How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar.